Hey guys, welcome to the second episode of This Week in Confi UI. We are February the 18th of 2023 and things have changed again. I'm making this series because I know it's quite common for people to gauge how far they are with Confi techniques by watching YouTube videos, but I couldn't find any that summarized what had happened on a week by week basis and so much has happened. I'm sorry I missed last week, but in exchange, I've released four new quick tips and a full on tutorial. So go check this out on my channel. Thank you, let's go. What do you like from our alien mothership in low orbit? Here are the latest Confi UI news. New models, new nodes, new control nets, violence, riots, explosions and nukes. The AI apocalypse is upon us. But are you ready? Psyched, before we get started, I wanted to point out that you guys have the attention span of a five-year-old on Ritalin and that none of my videos are monetized. So if you're watching ads, it's not me putting them there, okay? So please consider subscribing and leaving it a like if you enjoy my content. Without it, YouTube won't recommend those videos. Also, I heard it was seven years bad luck, so please. And by the way, uh, those stats are very disturbing, but I digress. Okay, the first thing we have today is the release of Dynami Crafter for Confi UI. So these are nodes, you can install them, they run exactly like any other node, use Confi Manager or install them manually. It works exactly like Animate Diff, it has pretty decent results, but it also has limitation. I think the main one is it doesn't have the support and love from the community that we're getting from Cosic and Ink and Animate Diff. And the second is that it's extraordinarily slow, even on a 4090. So have a look at those, but in my opinion, there are better options for the time being. This may change tomorrow though. Talking about Animate Diff Evolved, it's got updated yet again, but then again, it gets updated every 12 hours or so. So Cosic and Ink is an absolute machine and it's posted something very interesting on Discord on the Banadoko server. Let me show you. Yes, it is what you think it is. It's Stable Cascade running in Animate Diff. So I will, of course, have a full tutorial on that coming up. But until then, uh, you can go and have a play with it. Talking about Discord, actually, there is a new Discord. Oh, this looks very interesting. What is this? It's all in alien language. I wonder we could make something so disturbing. Uh, yeah, I created my own Discord because I wanted to touch on new topics. I wanted to specifically talk about the philosophy of it, especially since Sora got released. And it's a server on which I post uh, things like this, my artwork that's otherwise not directly linked on YouTube. And it has all sorts of fun stuff, including some really cool games by Europe, uh, where you can check if you can guess which one is the AI generated image or the real photo. So can you make the difference between the two? I couldn't hear, but uh, maybe you'll do better than me. Go check it out. I posted the link with everything else into this description. Going back to Confi, specifically models for Confi, it's quite common for people to get stuck with an old version of a model because they don't realize how fast they get updated. Look at this, that was two days ago. The new version of DreamShaper XL, it's absolutely fantastic and it works in turbo mode. It's good for anime, it's good for photorealistic, it's good for just about everything. I love Dream Shaper, it's brilliant. But there's also another new model, Hello World XL50 GPT4V. Yes, I'll get there eventually. Pretty difficult for me to pronounce all this being French and all. And it's got this really cool looking photorealistic feel. It's got specific keywords that you can use that have been listed by the author, so go check it out. I've created a few images for sourcing to SVD and I had excellent results with it. I highly recommend it. Another excellent model is Copax Timeless Excel. Now that one is also very recently updated in V10. And what makes this one really unique in my opinion is that it's one where you can actually go and create with DPM++ 3MSDE and that's quite rare. I've created this John Wick frame viewed from the back. I can't show you the ones from the front or the other shots because my content is PG-13 on YouTube and I would get banned. But let's just say there's some stuff Sora will never be able to do. In other news, we announced the tragic death of Drag Noir. Oh, Drag Noir, we barely knew you. Uh, it was only last week, I remember, that I was having so much fun with that tool. It was implemented in Confi, and what you could do is you could uh, essentially simulate movement by 
dragging objects around just like you do in commercial solutions like Runway. But it looks like something like Microsoft Scylla, aka the Microsoft Legal Hit Team, went and did the laundry. So now you're left with uh, this research paper to remind you of the good memories you had with Dragnua. Will it be back? I don't know. But I can tell you that the fight between free libre open source software and commercial solution is only going to accelerate over time. I know which team I'm on uh, and I recommend you do everything in your power to support free libre software through authors, patrons, things of that nature, because we're doing some cool stuff on our local computers, aren't we? And we don't want that to go away. Next up, we have another great release by Matteo, the creator of IP Adapter Plus, and that's native support for Instant ID within ConfigUI. And before you get smart with me, yes, I understand that it doesn't mean it's written in assembly, of course, but hey, don't be a smart ass with me, okay? Okay? All right, so what is Instant ID? It's not face replacement, like some people think, it's ID preservation across styles. So you can have this picture, for example, photorealistic, transform into anime, back and forth, etc. It's brilliant. So go check it out. Absolutely brilliant piece of work again by Matteo. He has a YouTube channel. Everything's linked in the description as usual. Wait, what? Oh. Dreams do come true. Oh. Right, I'm really sorry about the comment I just made about you being a smart ass. I wanted to say I'm very sorry, I apologize, and that won't happen again. Next up, we have ConfiUI VLM nodes. So these have been recently updated to support more models, have more features. What do they do? They allow you to use visual models within ConfiUI directly within your workflow. So yes, it means exactly what you think it means. You can take last week's Moondream, a tool I showed you, which is essentially a model that reads a picture and spits out some text as to what's in there. And you can even one shot it by asking it who's in the picture, for example. And it's John Kerry. Yeah, not the other John that you may know from this famous movie, because we don't want any problem with copyrights now, do we? But jokes aside, it's super useful. It essentially allows you to reverse engineer prompts. And if you're creative with these tools, you can do also do some really cool stuff with regards to infilling, especially with the recently released focus in painting nodes. So go check it out. Another super interesting release is Motion Director, which was previously a standalone tool allowing you to create your own motion LoRa's for Animate Diff have now been integrated directly into ConfiUI by none other than, yes, Kijai, another great developer. And this is super exciting. I mean, for me as a filmmaker, I love the idea of being able to take my cell phone, uh, shoot myself, not not that way, but, you know, shoot myself with a cell phone, and essentially capture movement, have my own movement source. I'm no longer dependent on 3D models, on films, on things of that nature, and being able to take that movement, pass it into Confi, and not just use a control net, but actually capturing that movement properly and reproducing it like I showed you two weeks ago. So go check it out. Another great set of nodes. Uh, to train it, you'll need a 4090 or maybe a 3080. It works about with 16 gig of RAM, but 20 is better. And now for those that are still with me, some really exciting new nodes came out last week. One of them is Propost by Digital John. And what that does is allows you to have control over the image, essentially post-processing within ConfiUI itself without having to open a third-party tool and do the editing there. You can do things like adding film grain, etc. I think there's like five filter in there. It's quite limited, of course, but it's only going to get better. It's brand new. Go check it out. Go download it. Really cool set of nodes. Another great tool for post-processing that I had no idea was out there are the Jovi Matrix nodes. And quite frankly, they absolutely blew my mind because there are so many of them and you can do so much stuff with them. It reminds me a lot of Confi Roll in many respects. I mean, if we go look at a workflow, of course, this is a little bit over the top, right? But it reminds me so much of Confi Roll. You got so much control over the image. You can do masking. You can do all sorts of stuff. Go check it out. That's another great set of post-processing tools which you must have in your arsenal. For something a little bit different, we have Face Fusion, and I understand it's not directly related to ConfiUI because it has its own GUI. It's something you install separately, but I know so many of you depend on Reactor, and I understand that for a lot of you, it's a big problem because of the bugs and the crashes. I mean, we're all familiar with this. And as you know, when you're using Animate Diff to create videos in AI, you need that face swapper. Otherwise, your talent, so to speak, your actor, is gonna change between scenes. You do need a face swapper. That's just a fact of of life. So the more it gets updated, the more face fusion is becoming the dominant face swapper out there. So go definitely check it out if you haven't heard of it. It's absolutely excellent. 
and I kept some of the best for last, that's automatic CFG. It's a single node, it sits between your load checkpoint and your case sampler. And what it will do is it will automatically adjust your CFG for you so you can rapidly switch models and it will automatically find the best CFG every single time. I tried it, it works really great. It's great for testing stuff and you can daisy chain it with things like free UV2 or deep shrink if you're familiar with those nodes, so go check it out. Please, no one ask me for a workflow for this one, okay? And plus, if you want to get my workflows, you can buy them on Etsy because some weird guy is selling my stuff over there and I can't do anything about it anyways. So never ever buy workflow. That's the tip I will leave you on before we see each other next week or on my Discord. Take care, guys. See you later.